from each of you, I'd like to get a perspective. I keep hearing that, you know, fintech is overvalued and it has no use case in Pakistan. And uh, obviously I know otherwise because I see each one of you scaling and building pretty formidable loan books. Uh, but, you know, I'd like to get your take on why your particular vertical is viable. Uh, so, Saman, we'll, we'll again go in reverse and I'll start from you, I especially, and I want you to sure. kind of go in deeper, a little bit into the, um, your credit scoring en engine perspective, because, sure. uh, you know, one of the main things that uh, criticism we always get is also that a lot of the lending is still done in a manual uh, manner, not sure. about your fintech, but generally in Pakistan. Sure. Um, yeah. But I know you've done some innovative stuff, so it's, uh, you know, sure. love to hear more about that. So, you know, let, let's um, look at the Pakistan market uh, on you know, broad brush level. So there's about 150 million adults or so in Pakistan. About 50 million of them are banked customers. Another 50 million have mobile money accounts, you know, Jazz and Easy Pesa. And the bottom 50 million probably have nothing, you know, maybe, or, you know, even if they have mobile money, they've never used it and so on. So this, this is the breakup of the 150 million. So out of the top 50 million, which is the bank customers, which definitionally are the people who are generally richer and have more access to money and, and, and income, et cetera. Even over there, if you look at the access to credit, depending on various numbers, there's between two to three million people that have access to credit in any form. Now we're talking about credit cards, talk about personal loans, we talk about cars, mortgages, you, have, you name it. All that put together, that's about maybe 3 million, if that. So that says clearly Pakistan is a very seriously under lent economy, right? And the question um, which begs the question, you know, why are we so under lent? And we are under lent even relative to, you know, near kind of equivalents like for example, Egypt. Um, so for example, if you look at the consumer credit to GDP ratio of Pakistan and compare that to Egypt, Pakistan is sitting at around two and a half percent, Egypt is sitting at 10%. So there's obviously something which was causing this credit access to be jammed up. Uh, and one, we, uh, you know, our hypothesis was that uh, the cost of origination was way too high in this country. If any of you in the audience have ever, you know, applied for credit to Pakistan, you know, it's a very laborious manual process. Typically, it must, takes about two weeks to complete for the bank. And that two weeks means a lot of cost. And that cost translates, that high origination cost translates into banks really trying to focus on people that they're very confident will qualify for the loans, which really means the top of the pyramid, which results in the situation that you have that only 3 million you know, borrowers out of 50 million account holders. So the whole idea of uh, creating scoring models is to uh, reduce that cost, ideally eliminate that cost or bring it as close as possible to zero. Uh, and that's what Adulfi focused on. So we, we tried to build um, these custom credit scoring models that work with banks and with uh, NBFCs that allow them to take a view of their customers, which does not rely upon either survey-based data or self-reported data, but works on hard digital data that in some cases banks already possess, in other cases they may acquire from partners. So that in a nutshell is what the credit scoring model does. So really, because we are not ourselves a lender, so it's not that we are focused on any particular vertical, but broadly speaking, banks today are using us for two big pieces. One is the consumer lending piece, unsecured consumer lending piece, and the second one is SME lending. So you know they use our scoring models to give out loans in those two broad categories. 